It all started like an ordinary day. You had a good night of sleep, you had your breakfast, prepared your lunch and went off to work. And while driving in your car to work, you started to feel lightheaded. You were short of breath and then a sharp pain on your chest occurred, which spread to your jaw and your left arm. And you immediately knew this was bad news. You put your car to the side of the road and you called 911. Well, I hope this is not your story. But if it is, this video is useful for those of you that already went through a heart attack and for those of you that desperately want to prevent one. Because in this video, we will cover what a heart attack is, what symptoms it can cause, when to contact your doctor and how a proper treatment plan could look like and much, much more. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important, potentially life-saving information. My name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and it's my mission to medically educate my viewers so you can make healthier decisions. And remember, I'm just a random doctor from the internet. I know nothing about your personal situation, so always contact your own doctor with personal questions. Let's get learning. So as promised, we'll start at the beginning. What is a heart attack and how is it caused? And in essence, this is quite simple. Your heart is a muscle that pumps blood through your whole body with every contraction. And as any muscle, it needs nutrients and oxygen to remain pumping. To remain contracting. Both nutrients and oxygen are present in your blood, which are supplied to your heart through several blood vessels. These are called the coronary arteries, which wrap around your entire heart. And during a heart attack, or in medical terms, a myocardial infarct, one or more of these coronary arteries are blocked. This causes your heart to receive insufficient oxygen and nutrients, which can make it very difficult for your heart to remain pumping can cause severe damage to your heart muscle, and ultimately, this can be fatal. And now you might wonder, how can it be that one of these coronary arteries becomes blocked? Well, this is a process which is years in the making. It's called arteriosclerosis. And during your lifetime, your body builds up plaques of fat, cholesterol, and other substances in your arteries. If these plaques become big enough, they can block the entire blood flow of a blood vessel. In addition, these plaques can sometimes also rupture and form a blood clot. This can also block the blood flow and cause a heart attack. This whole process is called coronary artery disease. Furthermore, there are also some less common other causes of a heart attack. First of all, there is coronary spasms. These might be due to cocaine use. A heart attack can also be caused by a significant emotional stress, medically known as Takotsubu syndrome or broken heart syndrome or exposure to extreme cold temperatures. Now, if you do have a heart attack, the most common symptom is a pain on your chest, which may last for several minutes, and it may radiate to your left or right arm, your neck, your shoulder, or your back. Other symptoms might include shortness of breath, nausea, feeling faint, a cold sweat, or fatigue. And here it is important to mention that about 30% of people have atypical symptoms, and among women, this is even more common. They might have a heart attack without chest pain and instead only have neck pain, arm pain or only feel tired. Unfortunately, a heart attack is very common. About 7 million people each year suffer from a heart attack, of which most are men. Therefore, it's also important you know when to contact your doctor, as receiving immediate medical care can save your life. So, do you experience an acute feeling of fullness in your stomach, extreme fatigue, a worsening cough, a heart rate above 100 beats per minute and rest, a new irregular heartbeat, chest pain during activity that goes away with rest, trouble breathing during regular activities, do you urinate less than usual, are you confused, dizzy or nauseous? Then contact your doctor as this might indicate an underlying heart problem for which treatment can be useful to prevent a future heart attack. On the other hand, if you experience a severe new chest pain, a heart rate above 150 beats per minute in rest, shortness of breath that does not go away with rest, a sudden weakness in your arms or legs, or do you lose consciousness? Then this is an immediate reason to contact an emergency number like 911 or visit the emergency room, as these symptoms might indicate an active heart attack. Now, if you do visit your doctor for a checkup, he or she might help you to find out the extent of your symptoms and the severity of the underlying cause 
Your doctor might do this by asking about your current symptoms, your medical history, the medication you're taking, and afterwards your doctor might do a physical examination, an ECG, some blood test. An ECG is a recording of your heart's electrical activity. And if necessary, your doctor might also recommend a coronary angiography, which is a procedure that uses X-ray imaging to see your heart's blood vessels. After having gathered all this information, your doctor might refer you to a cardiologist, which is a doctor that specializes in the treatment of heart problems. Now, besides keeping your body healthy and visiting your doctor when necessary, it's also important you click the like and subscribe button, as this keeps my blood pumping. Now, all jokes aside, these videos cost me a lot of time and effort to make, and if you do enjoy them, if you are learning something, then please click the like and subscribe button. This will help out the channel tremendously and prevents you from ever missing a video ever again. Which brings us to maybe the most important question of the entire video. How can you prevent a heart attack? And it all starts with lifestyle. As mentioned, a heart attack is often caused by the formation of a plaque of fat and cholesterol. If you sport 75 to 150 minutes every week, then you can lower your risk for developing these plaques. The same is true for keeping a healthy weight, maintaining a structured sleeping schedule, avoiding excessive consumption of alcohol, quitting smoking and reducing the amount of unhealthy food you eat, like excessive salts and saturated fats. Furthermore, a high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes and obesity can also increase your risk for developing these plaques. If you're dealing with any of these, then proper treatment for each of these, usually a combination of losing weight and medication, would also be recommended. Which brings us to the last topic we need to discuss, the treatment. So what if you indeed experience a pain on your chest? You call the emergency room, you need to go there, and it turns out that you're indeed having a heart attack. Then this requires immediate medical treatment. The treatment is aimed at unblocking blood vessels, reducing blood clot enlargement, and preventing a future heart attack, which all needs to be done to preserve as much heart muscle as possible. And several medications play a very important role in the treatment of a heart attack and the prevention of a future heart attack. Your doctor might prescribe you aspirin or heparin, which both reduce blood clotting. Your doctor might prescribe thrombolytics, which resolve blood clots, blocking blood flow to your heart. Your doctor might prescribe antiplatelet agents, which help prevent new blood clots and keep existing clots from getting larger. You might need pain relief medication, such as morphine. Your doctor might prescribe you nitroglycerin, which improves the blood flow to your heart muscles by widening your blood vessels. You might need beta blockers, which help to relax your heart muscles, slow down your heartbeat and decrease blood pressure. ACE inhibitors might play a role, which can also lower blood pressure. And lastly, your doctor might prescribe you statins, which lower your cholesterol. However, when your heart attack is severe enough, your doctor might also recommend surgery. Commonly, a coronary angioplasty and stenting are performed. This is a procedure where your doctor will guide a long, thin tube called a catheter from an artery in your groin or wrist to the block artery in your heart. This catheter has a special balloon on its tip, which can be inflated to open the blocked coronary artery. Afterwards, a stent is placed to keep the artery open which restores the blood flow to your heart muscle. Another surgical option would be a coronary artery bypass. Here, new veins and arteries are sutured and placed beyond the blocked or narrowed coronary artery, allowing blood flow to your heart to bypass the narrowed section. Lastly, after undergoing any of these surgical treatments, you probably will need to remain for a few days or a few weeks in the hospital until your condition is stable. It's very important that during this time, you start with cardiac rehabilitation. Most hospitals offer a program that might start while you're still in the hospital and continue for weeks to a couple of months after you have returned home. It's extremely important to participate in these programs because people who attend cardiac rehab after a heart attack generally live longer and are less likely to have another heart attack. So ask your doctor about it. I hope you know now what a heart attack is, how you can recognize it, and what to do if you experience any of the symptoms. Please, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer each and every one of them. And for those of you that want to keep on learning, check out the playlist in the description as educated people make healthier decisions, which is the whole point of this channel. I want to thank you all for watching. Please leave a like to the channel. This will help out the channel tremendously and consider subscribing. I'm posting weekly medical videos and you will never miss such an awesome video ever again if you click that subscribe button. 
I want to give a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Sebastian, who's an investor tier supporter. And for those of you that can't get enough, check out the Instagram as well, at How to Medicate. And I will see you next week with a new video. Bye bye and stay healthy.